this it surreal is a good good way to describe it, but it's really more um, j just a lot of heartbreak for the for the young men in our locker room. Weeks of questions and speculation are now answered as the university and athletic director at WSU made the announcement yesterday that Nick Rolovich is officially out as the Washington State head football coach. The university is taking a strong pro vaccine stance and now the question is what happens next? Good evening and thank you for joining us for Krem to News at 6 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan and I'm Whitney Ward. So while Rolovich maintained his silence today, it was time for WSU's interim coach now to get to work. Brenda Green joining us now with how the team is looking forward to this week big game against BYU and beyond. Brenna? Yeah, WSU's interim head coach Jake Dicker got right to work today. The team was back on the field before seven this morning for practice and Dicker emphasized they are his priority today. He promised to be there for his team as they navigate this difficult time. That commitment includes filling the remaining four assistant coaching positions. He's hoping to have all those coaches in place for the BYU game on Saturday. Travis Green joining us now with more on what Dickert had to say in his first press conference. Yeah, Dicker today hammered at home time and time again. His main concern right now is for his players and supporting them through this difficult time. Yeah. Out is Nick Rolovich and in is Jake Dicker. Uh, it's my pleasure, absolute pleasure, to, to welcome Coach Dickert. The 38-year-old, now an interim head coach at a Power 5 program, in large part thanks to being vaccinated. You know, that was, that was a long time ago, and I, I believe I was at the forefront of wanting to get a vaccination. That was my personal choice. Um, and at the time, it was, a, it was a rallying cry, you know, to try to get all of our fans, because we didn't know if there was going to be fans in the stadium, you know. So I was trying to be supportive and use my voice and my outreach um, because I knew I was trying to do something for the players. They, they deserve to have people and the cheers and these roars that we've heard the last couple of Saturdays. His attention was on the players today, who he says are affected most by yesterday's decision. Okay, and the, and the biggest thing, you know, I think this is a great day for perspective. You know, I hope everyone can stay, uh, take a step back and look at the big picture and focus on the people that are greatly changed uh, by yesterday and that's our student athletes. I'm a firm believer that adversity is life's greatest teacher. And that's what I praise to our guys and I preach to our guys. And I think this is gonna be another challenge for our guys to continue to learn and grow. His first practice acting as head coach was this morning where he had a message for the team. That I'm here for them, that I feel them, that I understand them. You know, there, there's a lot of pain and hurt, you know, that has been caused from, from these guys. And, you know, I want them to know that, you know, we're here all the time. We're, we're in it with them. Without a doubt, quite the opportunity for Dickert to showcase his abilities as the man in charge. On Monday's press conference, AD Pat Chun said he hopes to hire a coach that will want to retire from WSU. For those of you wondering, Dickert does indeed have a home in Pullman. <laughs> I do. I do. One with a trampoline in the backyard and, you know, one that I get to have fun with my boys and, you know, in the backyard playing football and well, you can tell he certainly cares about the players, and the title is as interim right now, but this certainly is the trial of a lifetime for Dicker. Brenna? Yeah, Travis, Nick Rolovich's firing has been one of the most unique situations in sports, period. No coach has ever been fired for refusing a vaccine before. Maybe we'll see it again, but in any case, it's the first. It's also unique as most firings in sports are relatively swift. Normally there's mumblings for max a few weeks and then a coach is gone. This drug on and on and on. Today I take you through the timeline of a saga that started nearly three months ago to the day. It all started on July 21st. Nick Rolovich released a statement via his Twitter that said he would not be at Pac-12 Media Day because it was required for participants to be vaccinated and he was unvaccinated. Ironically, this is the last time Nick Rolovich was on Twitter. He said he wanted his reasons to not get vaccinated to remain private. On July 27th, Rolovich participated in Pac-12 Media Day remotely. He shared some thoughts on vaccines. I'm not against vaccinations and I wholeheartedly support those who choose to be vaccinated. And said he thought that communication between him and the athletic department was good. To respect my decision, I don't mean to cause any uh, heartache to this university or this athletic department. We, we do have an open line of communication. 
Things remained relatively calm until Governor Inslee announced that all state employees had to be vaccinated on August 18th. The next morning on August 19th, Rolovich had media availability, and the line that dictated the saga for the next two months was born. Well, I plan on following his, his mandate, for sure. He also added about the mandate. It's, it's what the deal is. The very next day, when asked what following the mandate meant for him, he once again refused to answer the question. Well, I appreciate it, but I'm going to follow the mandate. You're the state's highest paid employee. Just what kind of message do you think you're sending by not saying what you'll do in terms of the mandate? I'm going to follow the mandate. Things then brewed for a few weeks. On September 13th, Seattle King 5 reporter Chris Daniels joined Rolovich's weekly presser, and things got easily the tensest yet. Have you received your shot or have you scheduled your shot? Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that, Chris. Uh, I uh, understand what you, what you guys are trying to get to, but... Um, are you seeking a, a religious or medical exemption? I'm not going to talk about that, it, that either, Chris. How do you answer those people that are upset about your stance on this? Uh, I'm sorry. On September 21st, Twitter user Kuga Sutra tweeted that a source had told him that Rolovich had begun the vaccination process. Rolovich's mom denied that on Twitter, then deleted all of her tweets. On September 22nd, the media asked Rolovich about the latest dust up. I haven't been on Twitter. I heard there was something going on, but, um, you know, we are where we're at with the mandate and moving forward with it. He also added that he didn't think he'd ever comment publicly on his vaccine status. Why have you just decided you don't, you don't want to touch that subject matter? Because I think I'm here to coach football and deal with football issues in the majority of my stuff. And there, there's, there's part of me that feels that some things should be private still. The morning of October 9th was really when everything started coming to a head. Rolovich's former head coach and mentor June Jones went on the record to USA Today and said that Rolovich had requested a religious exemption. As part of that story, Jones said, it's not about him anymore. It's about the people around you and the credibility of the university, and he's got to take one for the team. After the Cougs game against Oregon State, Rolovich confirmed that he had applied for a religious exemption and said that he felt betrayed by his former head coach. Not terribly happy with the way it happened. Um, I just, I hope there's no player that I coach has to wake up and, and feel the way I felt today. Many times over the next week, Rolovich was asked if he had heard anything back from the university about his exemption, to which he replied no. He also declined commenting on if he considered himself Catholic, which was how he was raised. The Pope has urged Catholics to get vaccinated. When asked his thoughts on how his decision could affect so many others' jobs, he essentially declined to answer that as well. I'd like to talk about Stanford, our football team, and, and move forward in that direction. Um, but I understand you, you feeling like that's um, the part of your job you need to do right now. After this previous Saturday's game, Rolovich said that he still didn't know his fate as WSU head coach. In his final media interaction ever as a WSU employee, I asked Rolovich if it came down to getting the vaccine or losing his job, what would he do? He was not a fan of that question. Brenda, if that happens out, you'll be the first to know. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Good. I don't think I'm getting a Christmas card. <laughs> it was yeah. indeed a saga. Hearing you explain kind of the timeline of that event or events rather. It went it on really for a was. long time, as you mentioned. Quick question. So moving forward, WSU, they have a game this weekend against BYU. Mm -hmm. Dickert is the interim head coach. Yes. How's this process work? Do you think he'll remain as the interim head coach for the rest of the season, or do you think they'll bring someone in right away? Uh, I think he's going to remain as the interim head coach for the rest of the season, and then they will reevaluate at the end of the year. Pat Chun did say on a Portland radio show today that, you know, if Dickert does well, he'll be in the running for becoming the head coach. Wow. So essentially kind of a tryout, for yes. lack of a better term, right? Yeah, I mean... On the job experience, let's yeah. go. No kidding. Yeah. Baptism by fire. Okay, so do you get the sense after kind of covering this and kind of digesting everything over the last 24 hours that maybe uh, Jake Dickert at least saw this coming to some extent and was kind of mentally preparing for this? Mm -hmm. As we look at that tweet that he had pinned as the top tweet for his uh, Twitter, right. he yeah. was getting his second shot and making mention of how this was for the team. Yes. 
Um, you know, I, I think that there were a lot of contingency plans in place, and WSU had to do that. They had to be ready if, if uh, Rolovich was out. So I do think he had enough of a heads up. He told me today that he did not find out an officially until 5 o'clock yesterday that he was going to be interim head coach. And can you give us a sense on, uh, so aside from Rolovich, four other assistants also let mm -hmm. go yesterday uh, as related to the mandate. Is that a big chunk of the coaching staff for WSU football? Yeah, I'd say it's uh, not a half, not a, a, under a half, yeah. but over a third, okay. I would say. So it's significant. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely significant. My goodness. So uh, it's, it's very weird because normally when a head coach gets fired, right. the staff still stays around. This is kind of an unprecedented situation to have half, you know, a little less than the half the staff gone. Yeah. And happen. he hopes to have them replaced by this Saturday's game. Crazy. That's My incredible. Goodness. Yeah. Nick Rolovich's era at WSC was just kind of strange because he came in during COVID, right? I mean, last season was, was weird. Not a regular season, mm -hmm. obviously, because yeah. of COVID. And neither was this one as well, but kind of more normal. But then after 11 games, he's out. It's it's definitely up there with one of the more bizarre coaching tenures that's ever happened in yeah. college football. My goodness. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Brenna.